Welcome back our fellow patriots to the Save Our Republic daily video series. We are continuing our review of the Bill of Rights. We're going to amendment number five. I'm going to read it to you. It's a little long. I'm going to break it up as we get through it so that uh, we don't have to run back and recapture what we've talked about. It begins with no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury. So capital crime is a crime for which the punishment is obviously death, or, or could be death. Um, infamous crime has been more recently interpreted uh, to mean a felony or other kind of major crime. And a grand jury is a group of a large number of uh, citizens who are summoned into a court and uh, evaluate evidence and uh, by a prosecutor. There's no defense at that point. And they present to the grand jury that they think there's enough evidence to charge someone. And if the grand jury agrees, then charges are issued. This is intended to be a hedge between uh, governmental authority and the people to and a defendant to put the people in between uh, to ensure that there is uh, a good reason to move forward with a criminal charge. It's done in secrecy and is not uh, universally utilized across the country. This amendment applies to the federal government. For example, where I'm from, the state of Michigan, uh, I preside over criminal trials uh, every day or proceedings every day that uh, simply move forward what's, with what's called a general information. In other words, um, there's no grand jury. The prosecutor just initiates the case on their own. It goes to it before a district court, and then the district court kind of acts as that hedge. They determine whether or not there's enough evidence to move forward before me in a felony case. That's not true with misdemeanors, uh, but it is true for felonies. To get to me, you have to have felony. Uh, so there's this idea that there's someone other than just the government accusing somebody to be able to move forward in connection with uh, a criminal prosecution. Obviously, that is a great hedge uh, against government overreach and um, a great protection for liberty. And it is something that is sorely lacking across most of time. Uh, many tyrannies simply just prosecuted anybody at the drop of a hat. And also, uh, even in the world today, you know, there's no such thing as a grand jury in uh, many totalitarian communist dictatorship kinds of regimes. The amendment continues. Except in cases arising in the land or naval forces or in the militia, when the actual service in time of war, public danger. So that's the exception to when a grand jury is not required. Um, Nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be put twice in jeopardy of life or limb. So in other words, uh, they can't try you, find that you are uh, have a not guilty verdict, and then try you again for the same charge. Um, and that's actually even a little bit broader. It includes usually charges that could have been brought uh, at at the time of the initial prosecution. It um, really is really important so that somebody isn't acquitted and then they just keep trying them over and over and over again. That is, of course, um, terrible injustice. And uh, in, in America, if you are acquitted by a jury or by a judge, it's over. You can, there's no appeal from the prosecutor and the prosecutor can't bring back the same case. So that's really important to protect liberty. So they get one shot. Nor shall any person be subject, oh, I already said that, uh, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself. So this is the right against self-incrimination. And that means that the individual um, can take what we call the fifth. This is the Fifth Amendment where they say, I'm not going to uh, speak about the crime or why I'm innocent. They don't have an obligation to come forward and present an affirmative case saying that they're not guilty. It's up to the prosecutor to prove that they're guilty. And uh, they can't use the, they can't compel the witness, the, the defendant, to testify against himself. Um, now, if the witness says something in front of other people, they can use that evidence that can be brought in, but you can't require the person to testify on the stand in a criminal proceeding. This originally began as a hedge against torture where uh, people would be literally tortured uh, with all kinds of diabolical devices and then they would they would confess and then the confession would be used against them 
And in America, you are not required to talk to the police. You're not required to talk to anyone. You have the right to remain silent, and that is a hedge against coercion, uh, fake confessions uh, brought from duress, uh, torture of the whole nine yards. It continues that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. And uh, I'm going to just talk about procedural due process here. There's also this thing called substance due process, which is a whole different discussion, probably worth us at least one separate video. But procedural due process is that you have the right to know what the charges are. First off, they, they can't uh, arrest you um, or cart you away unless they have charges. You have the right to know what the charges are. That's called notice. You have the right to be able to challenge the charges uh, through a trial or through motions. Uh, but you always have the right to a trial. And uh, you also have um, uh, the right to an impartial decision maker. So my courtroom, I'm the impartial decision maker, and so is the jury. I'm the impartial decision maker in connection with the law. The jury is the impartial decision maker in connection with the facts. Uh, you can waive the jury, uh, and then you'd have an impartial decision maker on both the facts and the law. That would be me in a bench trial. But you require this process. Again, very revolutionary in the course of human history. Most people might be arrested and never told what the charge is. They might serve for years and years and years in a prison camp, never be told what the charge is, might be executed. Uh, their property might be confiscated. Uh, you know, just terrible barbaric uh, treatment. And that is true today in many places in the world. But America has protected us against that by requiring procedural due process. It also continues, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. So they can't take your house, your home, your property, your farm, your business, unless it's being taken for public use. That means some kind of governmental function that everyone benefits from. Think of a road, a dam, um, maybe a utility plant, those kinds of things. And, um, and they have to pay you for it. So they just can't take your home and um, steal it. Uh, for whatever purpose and give it to, you know, the crown prince or uh, to some ba some political donor or something like that. Uh, and there's a long procedural process by which that happens. I had several of those cases. That's called condemnation. It's very important to protecting the unalienable rights of property and the pursuit of happiness and your liberty, if you think about it, because if they can toss you out of your home, you, you know, your liberty is really at risk. Until next time. Don't forget about America's Survival Guide at americasurvivalguide.com, Patriot Week at patriotweek.org, and the Patriot Lessons American History and Civics Podcast. God bless you, and God bless America.